Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on live stream music. Thank you for stopping by. Well, I trust you enjoyed my last video on Billie Eilish and through her career, we just looked at it again. Just being yourself and how the world seemed to resonate with that. So I trust you found that one encouraging. Well, Audrey Faith Perry was born in 1967 in Ridgeland, Mississippi, but she was adopted as a baby. Um, her first performance was actually at the age of seven at a luncheon, unless we're talking about his country music legend, um, megastar Faith Hill. Uh, she moved to Nashville, Tennessee, which is where you go if you want a bit of a music career, particularly if you're down south. And she got signed in 1988 to Warner Brothers. Um, in 1993, out came the album Take Me As I Am. And thanks to the song Wild One. And by the way, um, as I've been doing of late, uh, the links to all of my songs are in the description below. And it's going to refer to them as we go. Thanks to the song Wild One, um, and that album went to number one. Not bad for a debut album, Warner Brothers were thinking, right, uh, hold, on, I'll hold on to our hats here, we've got a mega star. So the official clip to Wild One is below. It's a classic case of the story of, of just being yourself. It doesn't really matter who you are, what people tell you, be yourself. It was around that time that um, Faith Hill um, had surgery on her vocal cords because there's a rupture in the blood vessels, and so there was a bit of a stress for everybody at that point. But in 1995, she came back with It Matters To Me, and that album also went to number one. I think it's a classic case of people were just hanging out to see what she's going to do next. Probably a little bit of empathy with her surgery, and uh, so the world rewarded her with another number one album. We got the official clip of It Matters to Me from 1995. Is then 1998 that um, Faith Hill thought, well, I'm going to reinvent myself a little bit. And she had a bit of a crossover, crossover album to pop country. And you may remember this cute little clip in 1998 called This Kiss. That song again went to number one. <laughs> And we got the official clip, clip below on that one. And I think this is this concept of crossover I just want to bring out a little bit more today. And that is, how do things change and progress in this world? Do you think like we just you now draw a big black line between something and then we just start something new? doesn't tend to work that way. What tends to happen is things just creep in over time. And they will, um, and they will become part of the, of the new way of doing things. Um, but, you know, it's based on what's happened in the past. Now, Faith Hill, um, in this album, did actually keep her country roots going a little bit here, but she wanted to really cross over into pop, and the world really resonated with the number one album at that point. So what can you tweak in this life? What can you tweak um, to change something, change just something up around you just to bring in a new version of you? I mean, you won't ever completely get rid of the old version, but what can you do to tweak in the new version of you? Check it as you get into this 1993 year, not 1993, 2023 year. What was I thinking 1993 for? 2023 year, you know, what can you tweak to reinvent yourself? Is it new clothes? No, new hairdo. Huh. I'm desperately in need, needing a new haircut right now, as you probably can probably tell. But I'm letting it grow just to see whether I can change my hair up a little bit, see what the hairdresser says when we get there. But, you know, um, sometimes we need to progress. We need to move forward in a way that's going to resonate with us. Uh, it's a way that's going to get us to just think, well, wait, there's more to me than just what, what you expected. I mean, Faith Hill could have just stayed with the whole country thing, but she decided to actually reinvent herself. Another lass that did this was Amy Grant, of course, with Heart in Motion. She reinvented herself from to a little bit more pop orientated at that point. So don't be scared to try new things. I think this is the message from Hey Faith Hill today. 1999, we got to the album Breathe. Again, this one went to number one, not just in the country music charts, but in many, many charts. And um, this was a massive um, album for her yet again. Uh, we've got a live version um, from the Live Aid 2005 concert. This was another attempt at Bob Geldof to just really get the world's consciousness forward around poverty. 
uh, being 20 years after Live Aid of 1985. So we've got a live version of Faith Hill singing Breathe. There's the concept of breathing, and that is, hey, you know, sometimes that's all we've got in this world. We think, well, if I just breathe and keep doing that, I'll be able to, I'll be able to um, just keep going. But the concept of breathing, coming up for air, not physically, but philosophically, I suppose, you know, we're seeing the world in a new way and we're learning how to live life perhaps afresh or anew. And we're learning how to breathe for the first time. The sky looks bluer for some reason because we breathe. Of course, breathing is one of those things that we don't think about doing. But you know what? When we need to center ourselves or focus ourselves, both kids sing on breathing is one of the ways that, um, that you can do that. Then we get to 2001, into the new millennium, and the movie Pearl Harbor came out. This is a massive movie, mega movie, this one. And if you're asked to actually do the... Um, the theme song for this particular movie, Now You've Made It. Get, bearing in mind, she only started, we got, she got signed in 1988, and so, you know, she hadn't even really been around for 20 years, but to be asked to do a lead song on a movie such as Big as Pearl Harbor is a pretty amazing thing. There you'll be again, a massive, massive, massive song for Faith Hill. We've got a live version and the official clip on that one. Um, in 2002, I came out, out the album Cry, again, pop-orientated, and we've got a live version from the David Letterman show. Um, one thing we can say about Dave is he has had no shortage of artists on his show over the years. And, you know, if you know if you do get on Letterman, you know you've made it. And so we've got a live version of Cry. Now, between 1993 and 2017, Faith Hill has released eight studio albums, four compilation albums, 35 music videos, 40, 46 singles. She's had 11 number one singles in the US and 15 number one singles in the world wide. And all of her albums have been certified gold or higher. So that's pretty significant in the scheme of things. Estimated she sold around 40 million albums worldwide. So this girl's an absolute megastar, that's for sure. And her career is still going. Um, 1988 to 2018, what's that? Uh, 30 years, her 30 year career is still going strong. Of course, she married Tim McGraw and they've done a bit of uh, music together as well. Quite a beautiful love story, that one indeed. Now, Faith Hill is a, a, a quite a quite a beautiful girl on screen that always helps, helps anything, particularly in the music industry. And because of that, she's been in a number of TV and film appearances as well. Um, artistically, she has an alto voice, so it's not the soprano hot up in the clouds kind of voice, but alto, and because of that, she's been able to bring a bit of warmth and personalization to her singing. And she's renowned, even though she doesn't write any of her own songs, um, she does pick songs that have a very personal and intimate story, intimate storytelling style to them. And because of that, the world has found resonance with her. Um, she has received three country music awards from a stack of nominations, uh, five Grammy awards again from a stack of nominations. She has received the Career Achievement Award from the Country Music Awards, and she's also received the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Um, we're talking about an absolute star here, a country music star that has been able to um, progress to move across to other. Um, genres through her career and, be and because of that she's been able to reinvent herself and find resonance with new audiences. But I think the takeaway from Faith Hill, again going back to that Faith album from 1998, there's something about the name and that album too, it's almost like Faith of going into a new direction, we'll see where it goes. And you know, we never really know um, where this world, where our lives are going to go, all we can do is just take that next step and see where it goes. Um, we don't always know what the next step's going to be, but we know we just have some gut feeling, inkling of what that step is going to be. Just got to take it and see where life takes us. If we uh, stay where we are, um, we're not ever going to really progress, and so we've got to take those risks in life, that is for sure. So the links to those, how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven clips are in the description below. And I've also included my last clip on Billie Eilish. So if you want to recap on her, feel free.
Well, how's 19, how are we doing it again? How's 2023 going so far? I trust you're having a great year so far. Um, well, if you've come back for another one, this is your first time to Life Reflections with Music. Thank you to everybody for coming back and hanging around. And as you can see, we're still um, finding artists in A to F. <laughs> And this is really truly where we're going to go next time with Anastasia. So until we get to we get onto her next time, catch you around. Bye for now.